All right, Bricks people. So a couple of days ago, I put up a tutorial about an easy way of creating and managing your SVG texture backgrounds. Um, I wanted to put the supplementary one up to show how I'm actually implementing it. Um, so the example I gave was really just showing how to do it, not necessarily the best place to put the code. Uh, so I want to talk here about that. Now, what I've done here, I've got an example here on the front end here. You can see all these circles in this uh, section here. And that's a background texture. If I go to that and just remove that texture so that we've just got that deep red color there, I'll start typing pattern. I've got a bunch of patterns I've created. So if I go select flower, I've got this white flower with a 10% alpha, um, which we can vary on a case-by-case uh, -case basis. And for each of these, I've got a dark version, which is a 10% black, okay? So it's as simple as you want a pattern. And let's say, for example, we want this eye pattern. We select the pattern eye. You can see this white eye pattern in the background. If we decide we want that to be dark, we can just type in EYE, and we want the dark version. A bit hard to see on this background, but we've got a... Uh, 10% alpha black eye on the background there. So the implementation of this, if you're not using a code manager, you should be. Um, it's a lot easier to manage all of your code than it is to try and put it into custom CSS and your theme or uh, you know in the different places and bricks that you can put it on elements or so just a better way is to keep it all organized in a single location so if you're not using a code manager you should i'm using scripts organizer you can be using wp code box whatever you like this is my preference so what i'm doing here is from this uh pattern monster site actually i'll head over there to show you i know it's in my previous video all I'm doing is selecting an example here. If I go fill with three colors, I think I used one of these, which I did, which is these dots down here somewhere. Here we go, these circles. So those circles there, all I did, set the first color to be fully, fully transparent, my second color to white, third color to black. Copy my CSS for that, and that's my starting point. Now over in my partials, I'll show you the circles down here, the circle duo. So I've just basically pasted the URL part of that in as a CSS variable. So that's a variable, direct copy and paste. Uh, and then all I've done in here is go look for the HSA, HSLA. So in that uh, pattern circles duo, there's two HSLAs. So that's one of the colors, which obviously this 0% is my black. So I've made that 0 0.06, uh, 0.06 alpha. Uh, and on my white down here, which is 100%, made that 0.06. That's all I've done there. You can also come up to the scale. The scale by default is two. You can change the scale. Actually, let's have a look at that. So if I select in here, I'm gonna select my circles. So circles duo. So you can see here I've got these black and white circles with a 0 0.06 alpha. So it's only just poking through. Uh, let's say I want the black to come through more. I go back to my code here. And where are we? So that is the black there. So maybe I want a bit darker on the black. Maybe we'll make that 0.2 on the black instead of 0 0.06. Save that back to my editor here see my blacks are darker I'll make that more obvious I'll make my black point six zero point six go back to here and see my blacks darker again so it's really easy to manage so I'm going to put that back to point zero six which will be my default point zero six Some reason this update sometimes not others just refresh that 
There we go. So it's going back to my 0.06 uh, alpha. Okay, so what I'm doing here is all of my patterns that I've copied from there, I basically put a the pattern I copied with my black being my dominant color. I then, sorry, my white being my dominant color. I then do a dark version. All I do is in the HS LSA. So if you look at this one here, for example, the HS LA, my L is 100% on that one, and on this one it's zero. So that is white, and that is black. My opacity, or not opacity, alpha on this one is 0.1. Um, and that's pretty much it. So I've got my hex um, CSS variable. I come back to my code here, which will actually output. And in the code, sorry, in uh, Scripts Organizer, you can load those CSS partials. So I separate the variables out. There's quite a bit here. It get really messy if you've got a lot of these. Uh, and by the way, all of this output is 3K. So don't worry about this being too big three kilobytes for all those patterns so and i'm going to probably add a few more for selection anyway so then we create a utility class x for external x dash to stay a methodology i use so when i create things in bricks i do b dash if it's external in a css uh, rule that's load external to bricks i use x dash so i know that's external to bricks so all I'm doing is creating a utility which sets the background image to that variable. Now if I go to this variable here, say for example, I'm going to delete this, I'm going to duplicate that section there, and on one of these sections, which is not being selected properly in the editor, we get rid of this duo auto. And you can see now I've got this top section here, even though it's a duplicate, it's got the bubbles in the background and the bottom one hasn't. And that's because we've added it as a utility class. So if I go back to the top one, and I take the utility class off, now that doesn't have the bubbles either. So if I want all of those uh, hero sections or feature sections, feature section Charlie, so this is from frames, want all of those to have those same bubbles, what I would do is I go to my uh, frames, feature section Charlie, go to my style, CSS, uh, root, background image, and I'm just going to head over and grab that variable, so my background image, Let's say we want it to be this hex pattern here. So I'm just going to grab that bar there. Chuck that in. Okay. Now all of them have got the hex background. So if I save that, have a look at the front end. Oops. I didn't save, obviously. There we go. So both of these have got the hex background because I applied it to that class, so the BEM class. Um, it's applied to every single one of these sections that uses that. So you can use it as a variable or as a utility class. It's entirely up to you. I would use it as a utility class if you're going to have multiples of these sections and you want to have different textures or no textures on some. Um, but if you're going to have the same one on all of them, I would actually apply it to the class. So that is how I'm managing these patterns that I've created. Uh, these are probably the patterns I'll end up using, but this is just getting it up there and, uh, and seeing how it all works. So I hope you like this sort of thing. If you do, hit the subscribe and hit the like. Thank you.